episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys how to whip up something simple. Now, uh, again, this is pretty basic. So this is going to be a little bit of a quickie, but the idea is, is um, kind of wanted to share when you have one of those problems or challenges that you need a quick solution to, Tinkercad is a pretty good answer to that. And one of the pieces that I have... Um, uh, you know, piece I need to design for is my new cooling system for my CNC. So I decided to actually hop over here in Tinkercad and whip something up and I figured I'd show you guys uh, you know how I'm doing it because I think this could be a handy little piece and again it's it's a relatively quick design uh, as you can see I'm just kind of whipping it up on the screen here. It's going to be a simple um, uh, cover for my um, water cooling system on my CNC and so what I'm doing is I'm just utilizing a few circles here to whip something up and um, I need to think here for a second about what dimensions because I'm making up some of the dimensions on the fly and um, we'll probably have to do a couple minor adjustments here whoops want to make this taller Sometimes it's a little tough to grab the handles, but uh, you know, again, this is one of the great things about uh, that I love about Tinkercad is you can just whip something up pretty quick uh, for a problem that you have and uh, go through it. So, so one of the pieces I'm doing here is I'm just making a um, an insert with this piece here that you see, and I'm just trying to figure out how big. Um, of a collar that I want and I'm just again playing this a lot by ear. I know the outer dimensions I'm just trying to guess a little bit at the inner dimensions and I think that's going to be probably pretty good just to uh, you know have the resiliency of the plastic where I need it to be in maintainability um, so yep that all looks pretty good and so I'm just going to join the group that nice hole you know, 20 millimeters high. I definitely don't need to be 20 millimeters high. Probably about eight. And then I'm going to bring these two pieces together. So obviously the larger piece is going to stop it from going into the bucket. And the bottom piece is going to be the collar to keep it centered uh, in the bucket. And I need to hit a line. There should be like a one button a line in. Um, Tinkercad. So there, there's our basic object. So this, this, this would plug the surface of the. Um, let's see, that's zero uh, of the bucket, and both those are zero. I'm just making sure that my height is okay because you can see the rim down there. So now the thing is, I need to create a piece for the cord to pass through, and I'm going to get a little bit fancier with this, and I'm going to say make this about 10 millimeters wide. And I don't need this to be 20 tall, so I'm going to make it about 15. Um, but I do want it to be a little bit artistic. So I don't want it to be just your road square. You could stop here and just use a square to do the cutout, but I want it to be a little bit fancier. And then so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this in. And um, so 15 tall. This must be still 20 tall, so make that 15. And then I'm just simply going to, again, use my favorite tool, the Align, to match this up and uh, scoot this up a little bit. It'd be nice to have, like, a line first half or something like that, so you could do, you know, getting a perfect Align on this. I'm not going to worry about being perfect. Um, I think that's good enough for government work but what one of the things that you notice is it, it gets this line here uh, because I don't have it perfectly it's pretty close but there's still a little bit of overhang I probably could nudge this up a little bit more so I'm gonna ungroup it um, because what I usually do let, let, let me kind of show you this this cheat uh, if I can whoops get the right button here I want to move this around and then turn this around. So you can see this this center hole right here, and then you see how this the distance from this. So what I usually do is use this as a gauge. So I'm going to 
actually select my box, bump it up a little bit. You can see here that I'm getting closer. So I select the box, bump it up a little bit, getting closer, bump it up a little bit, getting closer, bump it up a little bit. Pretty much right there, one more bump. And I'd say it's pretty close. Now notice the setting down here, I'm at point one. I'm actually gonna go one more bump. And I think I'm probably pretty much there. So I'm gonna zoom out, spin this around. Uh, let's look at it this way a little bit better. So again, I'm gonna choose this. You can see I'm pretty much there. You could probably argue I could split it one more time, but I'm just gonna take it as it is. And uh, you notice I still have that line, but it's not quite as prominent. And I'm just gonna go ahead and live with it for this project right now. So now I'm gonna turn this into a hole, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this over here, and I'm going to, I wanna make sure it's centered in my top, and it is. I'm gonna leave it a little bit proud down here on the bottom so it cuts it out. I'm not going to bring it all the way to the center. Um, because I don't want that big of an opening. Now you could also adjust this by pulling this down because I could make it a smaller opening. Um, and I actually might do that a little bit. Because the other piece you could do is you could put a spinner on the top. In other words, um, if you've seen those uh, pieces on, on a desk that have another piece on the top and then they spin around and close this opening up, because you could simply make another copy of this bottom piece, put a pin in it in a hole, and it could sit on there and spin around and, and cover up the hole. So your, your holes would be um, counter to one another. I'm not going to do that in this case, because uh, I don't need that for this project, but it is, is an idea for the future that you could do. So um, anyways, that would be uh, interesting. Maybe I'll show you. If there's enough interest, hit me up below. Uh, anyways, I am going to now group all this. Now, the other trick that you notice is I saved all my groupings. I kind of like to put as many groups into one group as possible. And there we go. And so here's my piece. So I'll tell you what, let's head over to the one how. Let's watch it being printed out. And then let's go over to the bucket and actually stick it on the bucket. So see you over there. Okay, welcome back. So uh, we showed you how to design this. I'll put a time lapse up in this corner. It's not that exciting. It's just a circle. However, I wanted to show it completed and in use. So um, this is going to be the cooling system for my CNC, my 3040 CNC. It's got a, 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 an 800 watt uh, water cooled spindle. So I've set this uh, two gallon bucket up. Now I'll do another video on that, but I just kind of wanted to show the finished product here because this is the idea. What I did is I wanted to have a larger hole in the um, the bucket to pass because I got to pass the power cables through the pump and the uh, the pressure line for the uh, water output. However, I didn't want it for a lot of contaminants to get in there, so that's why I mixed this up. And it was a handy little print. And as you as you saw how simple it was, I'll spit it out. It's early in the morning here. And again, this little loop just puts in here and then it snaps in. And then there's a, a pressure fit into the into the lid so as you remember it takes a little bit to pop it out which is good so remember that little lip we put around there that's what it's for is I measured with the calibers the opening here and I wanted to get it so it was a snug fit so the the power cable in this loop through and uh, it, it holds it as a snug fit into the thing but I can still pop it out obviously to, to you know take the pump out or change it or what have you and then I minimize obviously the surface area that goes in here so again I know this wasn't a complicated design however I did want to show you know just another practical application of how you can go from Tinkercad to actual productive 3D object you know in literally a half hour so um, if I did actually if I didn't make this video I could have done this probably you know from design to completed print maybe 20 minutes because again this this printed very quick there's not much there uh, only about three millimeters thick here and then I did it like 10 percent or 15 percent infill so anyways hopefully you get the idea and I've inspired you to go off and do something this uh, fine morning so if I did hey give it a thumbs up Oop, I get it in there give it a thumbs up um, 
Also, when the subscribe button comes up over here, uh, please press it. If you're not a subscriber, don't forget the swag shop. And if you are a subscriber, thank you. And we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.